It's been a long day for all of us, but boy, has it been an inspiring day. Um, I said to some people during lunch, there are some days I don't like my work so much, and there are some days that I really love it. And this day was as you expect, probably belonging to the second category, and actually still is, because it's not over yet. Um, I've learned an incredible lot. Um, I thought if I would be new agey, I would be talking about you know, feelings and spirit and everything that we've shared today. Um, and I'm not new agey, so I'm not gonna say that, but I really did feel like there is uh, an energy um, in this group, in the group that's here today, and there were some more people this morning, some actually couldn't be here in the afternoon, so they just came in the morning, but there was an incredible um, focus and attention to this topic, and I think we have all actually made some gigantic steps today in our understanding of what the issues are, and also in our understanding of what can be done. And I want to conclude with telling you what, what I want to do with this topic from my uh, leadership position at this university. And I'm going to use one of the, the questions that Damon uh, put up, at least in his workshop and maybe during his presentation too. And that's, what actionable steps might you personally put into place to create change from your role of leadership? Well, one thing that, that I've started, and I say I, but of course I mean we, uh, with, I did it with a whole group of people, and I did only a little bit, and then others started taking off and, and have done most of the work, um, is, is uh, we've written this paper in which we're presenting our ideas. And actually some of them will be fine-tuned on the basis of what we've learned today. I think there are lots of things that we can put in the paper now to make it even better. Um, but the version that we had last week, which had not been influenced by today, I just want to read you the last few points of our executive summary, which summarizes the steps that we want to start taking. And with me, with we, we mean our university, the steps that we think our university should start taking. Um, and these, these steps are um, that we want an explicit commitment to diversity as a core organizational value among top management and at key leadership positions in the organization. And with key leadership positions, we mean people at all levels of leadership in our organization, not just the deans and the, the board of the university. Establishment of an adequately resourced office of diversity headed by a dean of diversity who takes responsibility for mainstreaming and continuity of diversity policies, identification of opportunities, and progress monitoring. And the third point in our executive summary design of an integrative diversity strategy in the areas of HRM, teaching and learning, student recruitment and retention, research and external representation, and implementation of this strategy with special attention to mainstreaming and continuity of diversity, diversity policies, identification of opportunities, and progress monitoring. So just from these few points, it, I hope it's clear to all of you that this is a strategy that is not going to be a short-term project, but something that we'll be working on um, as a group for, for many years to come. And I truly, truly hope that all of you who are here today will be willing to join us. Our steering group consisted, I think, of about 15 people, and I really like the 100 that Paul just named, and I think we actually had more than 100 people today. So maybe we can very quickly upgrade this core group of 15 people to a core group of 100 people. And I think we all, we have your names and um, the faculties that you're at, and hopefully even your email addresses. So I'm just assuming that you're volunteering to be part of this new movement. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you, I'm just going to assume. <laughs> so what we're trying, going to try and do is finish our paper sometime within the next few weeks. Um, then it's still going to be a draft, but it's ready for circulation, and we'll circulate it obviously among the people who were here today. And experts from outside have already asked our esteemed speakers whether they would be willing to look at it and tell us whether they feel that we're on the right track. They've already looked at it, but they should look at the new version too. And they very graciously accepted that, and they actually will do that. So I'm sure that we'll make improvements and it will be even more robust uh, and wonderful. And then hopefully, uh, somewhere in the spring of 2013, this can actually become a paper with uh, a clear plan and a budget 
of course, because policy without budget is nothing. That's very obvious. And something that, that will be the starting point um, of a real change in culture at the University of Leiden. And it is good that we're not at a very good position because it also means that we can make really big steps. And that's just, then just from me personally, the, the area of gender equality is more something that I, I know uh, all the research in and I've been active in. So one thing that I personally will definitely continue to do um, is work on this issue, on the issue of gender equality from uh, LIRU, the League of European Research Universities. Leiden is part of that. It's the 21 sort of old school, very uh, prestigious universities in Europe, among which are Oxford and Cambridge and Heidelberg and Zurich. Uh, and those 21 universities um, have actually approved uh, a position paper also about gender equality, but then from, of course, all these universities. I was one of the authors of that paper. Um, and what I'm really proud of is the fact that um, in this paper, and that was actually something that I managed to put in, um, we have, we're promising each other, the rectors have all signed this, we're promising each other that every year we will show our uh, key figures on gender equality to each other. So every year, every one of the 21 near universities has to look at their data and at the progress they've made and we'll look at those monitoring data together. And that I think is going to be, it's a unique step, I don't know if any group of, of universities who are doing this together as a benchmark and also as a way of sharing best practices. But I think it's going to be very important because if Leiden then trails behind Oxford and Cambridge and uh, University College London and you name it, that will be a great incentive for us to do better. And if we're doing better, that will be even more wonderful. So I'm really having high hopes for that, even that only that part uh, of the exercise. And to make it even more exciting, Lero has just recently signed a memorandum of understanding um, with the EU, with Ms. Quinn, uh, the, the, um, the Commissioner for Research um, in the EU. And Ms. Quinn has decided on a, topic, a number of topics that she finds important in her research agenda. She has ERA, the European Research Area, and we're going to look at how much money there's actually going to be put in, in over the next years. And this will lead to all the goals for Horizon 2020. And it's going to be a very influential uh, budget for researchers all over Europe. And the question now is, is it going to have 100 billion uh, euros or 80 billion euros? The Brits are still undecided and threatening to pull out. So there's a lot of discussion. But it's going to, be, it's going to have a lot of money. And Quinn has decided on five big ticket items. One is open access and the other one is mobile of researchers across Europe, but the third one, and I forgot the other two, is gender equality. And she has signed this MOU with Liru, uh, and Liru is, uh, has promised Quinn to help her with reaching those European goals. So sometime in the spring of 2013, all EU uh, ministries of education um, will actually get um, information from Quinn about which goals they have to achieve. So that means that our new minister or secretary of state, I don't quite know how they're going to divide the roles, um, is going to receive instructions from Brussels on how to, re to, uh, to achieve more gender equality in academia. And that is going to be really good news for us because all Dutch universities have just signed agreements with the secretary of state, with Zijlstra, just before he is stepping down. And in all these agreements, there's no mention at all of gender equality in, in our universities. It's just a non-topic, but hopefully that is going to change. So I think it's incredibly exciting that Leiden is developing this policy. I'm really hoping that we can use the other universities to guide us along. I'm confident that if we can do it well in the area of gender equality, that we also will find tools to broaden our own Leiden scope to diversity in the broader sense of the word. So in that sense, I feel like lots of things are coming together. There's so many parties now who feel that, that academia is trailing behind, that we're not diverse enough to do our work well, that we need to produce better research, that we need to be better employers for, for the researchers and the staff that are working for us. And I think the time is right to make really big steps. And I think what we felt here today, the momentum, the excitement, the energy, is, is a, a result of that, or, or basically is an agreement with that, that statement. So I'm hoping that together with you, we can really start making big changes at our university and that at some point we can actually be leading in the Netherlands or maybe even in Europe. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And I think this day gave us a really good start in that. So I want to thank all the speakers and the workshop leaders for their 
unbelievably wonderful contributions. I'm hoping that you'll be willing to stay in touch with us and that maybe sometime in the near future we can even ask you to come back. But it's been great that you were here today, even if it's if you, you're not coming back, it's wonderful you were here this, just once. Because you're such amazing experts and you gave us so much of yourself. And we're very, very happy for that. So I have a small present for all the people who were leading workshops and speaking. I know it's a book. I think that's all I know. Does anybody know what's in the book? Because I really should be able to tell you. What's in the book? It's a, oh, it's a picture book of Leiden. Okay. So don't look at it too much, because then you won't have an incentive to come back. <laughs> can, can I ask you to come forward, please? And, and so I can thank you in front of everybody. And would you please give our speakers and workshop. Please.